Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure you uh, go down, hit the thumbs up, leave me a comment at the end. Tell me if you like this video or not. I'm always trying to uh, improve my content and put out what my viewers want to see. So if you like these longer videos, give me a thumbs up. If uh, you like the shorter videos, leave me a uh, comment in the comment section. And uh, I'm sure I'll continue to do both. <laughs> Let's get going. Hey guys, welcome to Midland, Michigan on this beautiful June day. It's June now. In fact, uh, today's June 1st. Yesterday was Memorial Day. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I uh, hope that some of you were able to get out to the cemetery and pay some respects to the uh, fallen soldiers who fought for your rights and freedom. Um, I came here because I had to work yesterday. I came to the cemetery today to clean some uh, veteran headstones and pay my respects to those men and women. Um, but I want to show you something that is kind of something that irritates the heck out of me. It's something that's been commonly done for many years uh, to read an inscription on a headstone and uh, there's three headstones here I know for a fact that one of these is uh, well someone with this last name is uh, there's a request out on find a grave for a grave with this last name and I'm sure that that's why this was done but this needs to stop. If you are somebody that does this, you gotta stop it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See that? Sorry. <laughs> See that right there? Those letters are completely full of what I can assume to be flour. And this whole face of this stone is covered with flour. And this is all covered with flour. Whoever did this didn't even have the common courtesy to rinse it off and make sure that the stone doesn't have any flour caked on it anymore. I mean, that stone has it. This stone looks like it probably has some flour on it. And this stone, you can see right here on the ground, where there's some hardened flour. And it's all over the face of the stone there. This has to stop people. It just has to. That is not a good way to be able to read a stone. In fact, this particular stone, I photographed for Find a Grave last year. And I use the settings on my phone to be able to read that better. There are a lot of different ways to do it. Flowering, chalking, rubbing of any kind on these old soft stones. It's not a good way to go. It's not a good way to do it. All you're doing is plugging up the pores on that stone and making that stone not able to breathe not able to shed water, not able to take on water. And all that's going to do is start to deteriorate the stone. Not to mention, take some, take some flour, put it on a paper plate and wet it down and uh, let it dry for a couple of days and then wet it down and let it dry for a couple of days and let it, wet it down, let it dry for a couple of days. Put it on your counter. Watch what it does. You ain't going to like it. That's what it's going to do to that stone. That's going to get moldy. 
that's going to get nasty that's going to start to destroy that stone when someone like me that comes along and sees that i can't do anything about it unless i contact somebody in this family and they allow me to clean these stones for them that being said let's uh take a walk around here and we'll try to find i don't know i could probably get uh four or five veteran stones done today before i really need to take off so i uh, found one right here in front of me and i'm gonna clean it probably find three or four five more maybe so this one i think would be a good one john bronk i think this one was in a uh, video of this cemetery that i had done a couple months ago actually so this would be a good one to uh kind of follow up on it's interesting 23rd michigan infantry i actually had a an ancestor direct ancestor that fought 23rd michigan infantry company k this is company e go get some water and we'll get started on this one okay first thing we're gonna do on this stone since it seems to be have a lot much more deeper growth in it it's not uh, a lot of surface growth we're gonna spray this with D2 and uh, we're gonna go walk around for a little bit and let the D2 soak in for 15 minutes or so uh, because I want the D2 to get in there and start killing all that stuff that uh, is living inside this stone. There's not a, not a lot of surface growth like there has been on the last few or so that you've seen me clean. This is just straight D2. And uh, that's going to work a lot better on this type of growth than uh, if we were to wet the stone down. Because wetting the stone down, it, it really, it really kind of keeps the D2 out on the surface more. So uh, by spraying this directly on the stone, it's going to allow that D2 to penetrate in and kill some of that deeper growth so we'll uh let that sit for 10-15 minutes we'll go look at some other stones maybe we'll find a few other ones to clean and uh then we'll come back and we'll work on this one Okay, well, I think here's a, a good one right here. This one is uh, Raymond W. Farnham. Private, Company H, 35th Regiment, Michigan Infantry, Spanish-American War. I brought my sprayer along here with me, and I figured uh, as I'm walking around, I can spray these down and get a pre-treatment on them before I come back and give it a good scrubbing sorry if I'm not holding the camera very still but and uh, that over there is his wife unfortunately uh, I'm not gonna be able to clean her headstone unless I get permission from the family it's a privately purchased headstone Here's another one right here. Oh, this must be a brother or son or something. This flag holder's all bent out of shape. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah. We can get this one pre-treated. These all got uh, the real deep set black mold. Typically I see a lot of uh, lichen build up on these, but they got like a, a deeper black mold in them. It's kind of interesting. Probably uh, you know, a lot of these trees have to do with it, especially those pines. Look at the size of that oak tree they cut down. <laughs> A big one yeah see here's another one this one is uh, what I typically see lots of uh, lots of surface growth lichen Moses Hackett treatment on this one here. It's a beautiful day out today. It's uh, probably about somewhere around 80 degrees anyways. If you're in the shade, there's a slight breeze and it cools you off just enough to make it not too hot. There, we'll let that one soak for a little bit. Let's see, let's find, uh, let's find two more. There's got to be two more right in this area. Here's one right out by the road. See it right there? Yeah, that'll be a good one. Oh, nope, that's a private marker. Hmm. Let's see. There's got to be one right around here somewhere. There's one right here. This one could use a good cleaning. Let's find one more. And remember the Civil War right there. My last video that I did in this cemetery, I can remember one that was just sticking out of the snow and it looked so dirty. And right here it is. Oh, look at this. I don't remember that being on its face the last time I was here. It's too bad. Very sad when things like that happen. Although I do see uh, some restoration efforts on a few headstones out here. So it gives me hope. I have heard that the sexton that takes care of this cemetery is really nice and really likes his job which is good my uh, great great grandfather used to help take care of this cemetery and uh, it's nice to hear when someone is continuing that level of care in fact my great great grandfather is buried in this cemetery Okay, well, I think uh, 
Unless I see another one on the way back over here. I think that one will be the last one we do. Oh, here's another one right here. Okay. This one will be the last one. This one is in a lot of need. Cleaning right here. Lots of uh, tent worms this time of year. I see tent worms all over this. They don't like being sprayed. Daddy long legs too. It's unfortunate that it won't kill the tent worms. Fortunate that it won't harm the uh, daddy long legs though. So. Okay, so let's head back over here to the first one we picked out. This whole little section here will be, the veterans in this little section here will be looking good by the time we leave. Okay, so by now that uh, D2's had some time to work, and we're just going to go in and add a little agitation. on the front there since I rinsed it a little bit but uh, a lot of that stuff is coming off okay I think what we'll do is we'll spray it down again and uh, we'll leave it be and maybe in a couple weeks Come back and check it out. These ones that don't have, <clears throat> that have a deeply set growth, I don't like to scrub on them because it doesn't really do much good. It doesn't, doesn't make them any more clean today. And uh, this is kind of one of those things that you want to really take your time with so you don't do too much harm. So. Awesome. Let's go find that next one. Okay, what I think you are gonna see here is uh, you're gonna see that these stones typically come very clean. Um, this is just a little bit off. There. Wow, look at all those ants there. I don't know if you can see those in the camera or not, but they're not going to be real happy here in a minute. We'll straighten this flag holder up some. There. What you're gonna see here, I think, is uh, this stone is gonna take to cleaning very well. They typically do. And typically, uh, 
have this thing looking pretty new, pretty clean by the time we leave. Okay, gonna do the same process on this one again. Like I said, these ones, the granite typically doesn't take on a whole lot of deeper inner growth. So uh, we'll be able to get this one looking really good today. If this was a marble stone of the similar uh, design, I probably would do like I did on that first one. Only because it's marble, it's much softer material, this granite. Uh, it's going to clean up really nice, so we'll get another treatment of D2 on it and uh, we'll revisit this one before we leave and we'll have it looking really nice, I think, before, before the end of this trip. Same protocol on this one as the first one, we'll uh, just get it a little wet. These stones are drying up pretty quick today. That's looking a lot better. And I think we'll uh, do the same exact thing we did with that other one. We'll just spray it down again. We'll let the D2 work on it. That's always the safest bet. The, the least amount of brushing you can do, the better. If you can allow the the solution to do the work for you that's uh, a low impact um, and you know this kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier been seeing a lot of things around YouTube around Facebook and other social media some uninformed individuals talking about how wet and forget is better than D2 because D2 is abrasive and all this other stuff. I don't know how, first of all, a liquid can be abrasive unless you're using it under pressure. But secondly, D2 for a long time was the only quaternary ammonium compound that was approved by the National Cemeteries Administration for use on these veteran headstones in national cemeteries. So, if you are planning on doing what I'm doing or cleaning your family gravestones, wet and forget and D2 are for all intents and purposes pretty much the same thing. Wet and forget you mix with water, it's a, it's a concentrate that you mix with water, D2 you use it straight. Do not let anyone talk you into using household cleaners, bleach, scrubbing bubbles, ammonium, ammonia, 
Uh, I've seen lots of people say use vinegar. I've seen lots of people use shaving cream, other things. Here's the, here's the bottom line. If it's got a pH that's higher or lower than, if it's, if it's got a pH that's higher than nine or lower than six, you really probably don't want to use it on your headstone. Secondly, if you look on the container and it says that you should use gloves to cause, or to uh, not cause uh, harm to your skin, that's probably another red flag. If the container says corrosive or toxic, probably shouldn't use it on your headstone so don't listen to the people that want to chime in and say you know blah 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 d2 is perfectly safe to use on your headstones uh, it's actually safe to use on a lot of other things like your deck or your concrete in your garage that is moldy or whatever so uh, I guess I'll get off my soapbox now and we'll keep going <laughs> Okay, got another uh, granite marker here, much like that other one. I'm just going to give it a little water, we'll, uh, square it up on its foundation here, and we'll give it a little scrubbing. kind of be careful when you're working on these stones that are in the sunlight you don't let them dry up because that staining will or that uh, stuff that you're scrubbing off can stain the stone be a little bit harder to get out boy didn't that thing come clean that baby looks good Oh yeah, look at that. That's wonderful. We'll just uh, coat that one down with some D2. Call it good. Actually, uh, pretty darn excited about this one because I think this one is going to clean up very nicely. We're gonna try to move this medallion. I think this one is gonna have a very dramatic difference. Uh, time we scrub it and rinse it off. This thing appears to have probably sunken. Um, probably I'd say at least 12 inches over the years it could it could be that it broke off and they cut it and there's a foundation under here but uh, this thing should be at least this tall so this thing is it's uh, sunk into the ground quite a ways um, that's something that somebody would have to ask the sexton to do in this cemetery for sure I haven't even put a brush on it yet and I can already tell on the top right here where I just poured that water that it uh, did change the color a lot.
doing very delicate brushing it's uh you know literally no pressure whatsoever just uh making contact on the stone with the brush is it you don't want to get to the point where you're tensing up your muscles and and brushing really hard because uh that's when you start to do a lot of abrasive damage to the stone so Ready for this? I think it's gonna be pretty good. Drum roll. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's looking pretty good. Fantastic. Look at that. That thing was like uh, army green. <laughs> but now it actually looks like it's supposed to be white. Amazing. Now, the purpose really of this video is to kind of show people what they can do in a short period of time um, you know and, and not to expect perfect results uh, in that period of time because this is really something that needs to be needs to have lots of patience um, yeah you could probably come out here and uh, scrub this thing until it looked perfect like I got something plug in my nozzle here there we go um, you could come out here and scrub on these things until they look perfect but are you really preserving it at that point or are you just getting it clean you know the idea is to clean it so that it preserves itself basically um, or at least so that the stuff that's on it doesn't do any more damage to it but in that process you don't want to do any physical damage to this stone either so less is more when it comes to preservation that's what we're all about we want to do the least amount of work on this stone that we can and still get the same res end result over a longer period of time so okay this one is done for now a couple of weeks it'll be looking nice and uh, I think we've got what two more or one more something like that kind of forgot <laughs> we'll put this medallion and flag back up and we'll go to the next one That guy's cool. Couldn't tell by his awesome, obnoxious exhaust on his motorcycle. Okay, another uh, marble marker. And uh, I did do some retracing of my steps and noticed that uh, we did completely skip over another granite ground level marker so
something I've noticed with some of these granite markers, or <laughs> some of these marble markers, I should say, is you can see down here, this uh, growth here is like starting to turn a yellowish color. And uh, I've noticed that that happens a lot with these marble markers. There's a certain type of growth that uh, when you get the D2 on it and it starts to die, it starts to give off like this yellow orange tinge and uh, I've got an example of a granite ground level marker like one of the ones we cleaned earlier um, that did the same thing and uh, it's a word of caution to people that uh, try to to do this um, you may see that happen you don't have to get freaked out about it uh, you didn't ruin the stone it's just the way that that growth reacts to the biological solution that you put on it so not a big deal it uh sometimes these white ones once that happens they'll start to look kind of like rusty yellow um it will go away it takes time sometimes but it will go away so. okay let's spray this one down again and then we'll go over and we'll uh, attack those two granite markers again and uh, We'll get out of here. Okay, look at this nasty old thing. Remember the last one we did? gonna be looking like that in no time. A little bit of water. Now let the magic happen. These ones with an exposed foundation, I like to scrub the foundation also. It's always nice to come back in a couple weeks and got a nice clean headstone sitting up on a nice light gray concrete foundation looks beautiful. This man's story, legacy, everything he fought for, everything he did in his life rests right here. Give everything a nice coating of D2.
let Mother Nature do the rest. Hey guys, thanks for coming along. Make sure if you haven't already, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And uh, share this with all your friends. We're going to keep doing stuff like this. You'll get to see it firsthand. Thanks for coming along.